Hi, it's Johanna here. Welcome to my channel. I'm going to show you how to do a 3D French with a little bubble in there. Um, so I'm going to start with my favourite NSI cover powder in Pink Mask. And I'm just going to, it's, it's very late, I'm just going to let the product do all the work just to show you this technique. I'll just let gravity pull it down and I'm going to let it set slightly I forgot to put a tissue out <laughs> but anyway now I'm going to chop it off because I'm going to file it into a nice shape for the French so now it's set after a few minutes it's dry enough. I'm going to go back in with my file and just neaten up the shape real quick. Should have used a dry bead really, but I'm feeling pretty lazy today. <laughs> I just wanted to quickly have a go and I thought, oh, I'll just hit the record button, see how well it goes. <laughs> It's my first time trying this, so it turns out all right. It's uh, far more 3D than the photo tells you. It's um, it's very cool look. So just making an almond shape with a wall there. I've built a wall of pink mask to butt the French up against, which you'll see. I'll take a pre-cut form, is one I prepared earlier, and just make sure it fits flush underneath that extended bit. I'm going to pinch it tight because I want it thin underneath. And just pinching it at the tip. <laughs> So I went in with some gel polish right up to that wall and painted the wall. Very important for the 3D look. And I just flash cured a bit. And then um, I went in and just did a little bit more. Just because I wanted a really solid white base. And you'll see what I'm going to do next. The idea um, was to do a bit of gel colour layering for the bubble which I was talking about in my last video and um, if you want to keep the bubble look it's best to use a couple of colours um, because we found out that the, the clear bubble obviously didn't work because you, if you go to put a top coat over it you just destroy the bubble effect so pink over white bubble straight away into the uncured layer and cure and watch all those bubbles pop and cleanse with alcohol and so we've got I was hoping it was going to be sort of more burst open than that I thought there was going to be more white showing through but it's pretty cool just drying that off because I'm ready to go in with a clear acrylic so we've got that 3d bubble look inside the clear acrylic i'm just drying it right out i want it nice and dry so i can make a wall actually i did decide to do it a bit longer i was going to do it that long um just flattening down that bead blending it into the next one with the tip of my brush just making it even and then using the bed belly of my brush to make it flush and going in again I'm just going to cover all that pink because it was so cool I thought I want to get a decent amount so you can see it 
I'm just making a wall again. I am going to go and violet, which is a bit of a faff. <laughs> but you can see the flaws otherwise. So I'll just cover my pot. Don't want to get any dust in there. And like I said, just wait for it to dry a few minutes. Then when it's cured enough, and set hard, just go in there and sharpen up that edge. Just a few passes with the file. Connect it round to the tip. We're still going with that almond. We're following the almond shape. So get your side walls the same, sort of aiming towards the outside of the finger until the file touches the side of the finger. You can feel it's the same on both sides. Brushing off the excess. Dust, anyone? <laughs> and I'm going to go in with white. Classic white with a twist. So just waiting for that bead to suck up all the liquid and then brushing it on and feathering that back because when I file it on the surface, it's going to reveal those crisp lines. So I'm not too worried, just brushing it back there, just making sure it's roughly the same thickness on both sides. Checking the outside edge there, <coughs> it was a bit thin. I was feeling a bit awkward with the camera in between. <laughs> Rubbish at videoing it. What's up with me? Can't seem to get it right. <laughs> anyway, you get the idea. Just stroking it out. Right. I think I'm happy with that. Now. <laughs> so... Wait for it to dry. You want that lovely clicking sound. And pull that form down and away. Very sticky forms, which is good. Because it means it won't move and screw up your extension. It's nice and tight in there. Very sticky. So I'll just get rid of that with some isopropyl alcohol. And I'm going to just file this with my e-file. I would do it by hand. I often do it by hand. But it's late. <laughs> and just to show the effect. I'm just going to whip over. Very gently. And then I'm going to reveal that smile line. I should have filed it a bit more, really, in hindsight. But I couldn't quite see what I was doing. The camera was sort of getting in the way. I must raise the camera up a bit higher and then zoom in, I suppose. But anyway, you get the idea. Once you've built that lovely wall, you can then buff the surface and reveal that lovely, crisp smile line. It looked crisp to me, but when I zoomed in, I realised that it wasn't as much. But I did file it afterwards, and I thought, oh, I should have just gone a little bit further. So just make sure you, you're filing enough. You will get a white line, because you painted up up that wall. So there will be a very, a very fine white line, if that's your starting colour. And finishing with the free edge. So 
No point doing the free edge first, really. I've got to come back and do it again. The free edge will always alter after you've been over the surface, so it's best to do the free edge last, really. So whipping it round side to side so that it's even. Brush off the dust, a little cleanse, used alcohol, no I didn't, I used acetone, just to melt the surface a bit, smooth it out and finish with, I've used Seal by NSI because I've run out of Glaze and Go. And there you have it, cured. Like I said, it's far more 3D in person. It's hard to tell. But there you go. <laughs>